Say the line, Bart! Some people say that, but you know, it's just a theory. Yeah! The Five Nights at Freddy's movie has finally been released after eight years of production issues. Well, you don't have to tell me twice. In all seriousness, speaking as one of those kids who became absolutely obsessed with FNAF back in 2014 to 2015, it's great to see that they finally managed to squeeze the movie out and that it's going to bankroll Universal's lithium mining operations for the next five years. I doubt anyone was going into the Five Nights at Freddy's movie expecting a masterpiece, but it's looking like we have a second Mario movie situation on our hands. And that description can mean a variety of different things depending on who you ask. It's either the movie was good but the critics are wrong, the movie was bad and the fans are wrong, the movie was fine and everyone should just chill out and play squash or something, or my personal favourite solution, just watch the film and don't worry about a percentage of people disliking it. That's actually the reasonable answer, I was gonna suggest carpet bombing anyone who disagrees with me. Nevertheless, I saw this coming a mile away. You saw this coming a mile away. The FNAF movie is causing some stupid film discourse. However, it doesn't seem to be nearly as divisive as the Mario movie was. In fact, from what I've seen, the majority of people, not an overwhelming majority, but still a majority, seem to be veering towards a far more negative stance towards the FNAF movie compared to Mario, which most people agreed was an alright movie that you'd mainly get the most enjoyment out of if you were a long time Mario fan. However, outside of the FNAF fandom, who are obviously going to be meat riding the film like No Tomorrow and obsessing over the cameo appearance of William Afton's receding hairline, people seem to be far more critical of the movie both as a standalone film and as an adaptation of the source material. Most seem to say that while the movie is enjoyable for purely ironic and unironic reasons, it's not a very good movie nor is it that great of an adaptation due to a number of completely baffling story decisions, and trust me, that's saying a lot when it comes to the same franchise that's lore can be described by noises that come out of XQC's mouth. <laughs> So we're gonna talk about it all. I'm here to give my honest thoughts on the movie and also discuss the discourse for a bit. I may end up repeating some things I said in my Mario video here, but I think it's more than justified. Out of all of the movies I have seen this year, the FNAF movie is one of them. We'll go over the positives to start with, but they should be incredibly obvious to anyone who's seen the trailers. First of all, the movie. The thing you're looking at, the visuals. It's perfect. The Jim Henson company did an absolutely incredible job with the animatronics. They looked like they were ripped straight from the games and look incredibly natural in live action. I'm still not a big fan of the orange eyes whenever they go into Terminator mode, but the fact that they cared so much about making sure the animatronics were done practically and looked as natural as possible is very commendable. And that goes for everything about the film's visuals. The pizzeria itself is beautiful lit and filled with plenty of easter eggs that will be giving FNAF YouTubers a steady supply of bread for the next six months or so. Everything about the film's visuals comes off as very authentic and there was rarely a moment where I was taken out of the film by its production design and effects. I was taken out of the film by factors outside of that, but let's not get ahead of ourselves here. There was the rare instance of goofy CGI, like there was one point where I recognised the blatant use of a blood splatter green screen when they showed the shadow of Freddy chomping someone in half. For some reason the Peacock version of the film removes it, but as someone who watched an early screening of it, I still remember it being there. I don't know if this is a Spider-Verse thing where like an unfinished version was put in cinemas first, but I, I genuinely don't know, I still remember seeing a far bigger splatter on screen. But given the film already looks this good, it hardly seems fair to make fun of it for that. And in terms of cinematography, it was pretty clean and well shot, even if it didn't do anything interesting. The sound design was pretty good, the film's score was okay, the acting was surprisingly okay overall. Like, no one's trying to go for an Oscar here, nor are they necessarily doing a bad job. Shaggy was definitely fun to watch as Afton, for the two minutes of screen time he actually had, and there were some genuinely good scenes in this, especially the spring lock scene, which I'd hesitate to call a spoiler because everyone knew Afton was in the film anyway, but even though the scene isn't incredibly gory or anything, it's still very well done, and incredibly uncomfortable, and I can safely say that in terms of visual spectacle and winks and nods to the games, I definitely enjoyed the film. That's where the positives end. Okay, so before we tear the movie apart, I gotta stress that I did enjoy the film as a former FNAF fan, but you have gotta be on some insane copium to ever suggest that the film is good as a standalone film or even as an actual adaptation of the games. It has plenty of fan service and is clearly made with fans in mind, but as an actual adaptation of the games, it's pretty poor, honestly. And the moment I watched the opening credits and saw Scott's name was attached to the screenplay, I was prepared to witness a true cluster f of a narrative. I don't understand why being able to like a bad movie is such a false and concept to people. Like, you can easily admit that something is bad and still find enjoyment in it. You don't need to suggest that people whose jobs literally revolve around reviewing movies are wrong just because they thought the movie
movie was bad. People are currently making fun of this IGN review for saying there was too much story in the movie and countering it by saying that they just didn't get the FNAF lore and that having a lot of story is good for FNAF fans. Yeah, about that, it's actually the complete opposite problem. This film's story is absolutely atrocious, both as a story for a film and as a Five Nights at Freddy's movie, because there's so little effort put into it in regards to the actual lore of the franchise. Choosing to mash together different elements from a variety of different entries and only ever exploring them on a surface level. FNAF is not renowned for having a good story, in fact a lot of the enjoyment people get out of it is that it's completely batch insane gibberish and yet still pretty engaging, but despite having the guy who literally wrote that story on the screenplay for this, the movie somehow fails. Before we go into the story, let's talk about the horror aspects and how good of an adaptation it actually is. Scaling the movie down to FNAF 1 is a good move on paper as it has the simplest story and gameplay to adapt, even though they ruin that, but I digress. But I was still kind of surprised at how the movie based on a series of games where you have to hastily keep animatronics out of your office while managing your power consumption, an honestly brilliant idea and a great way to build dread and horror for a horror film, has basically nothing to do with that idea. When people complain the movie has too much plot, they aren't complaining that the film has a story, they're complaining about the fact that there is literally nothing about the film outside of the prologue showing the previous security guard that actually does anything horror related with its incredibly good premise. I'm not suggesting the entire film had to be just checking cameras and vents in the entire time, but you can still have a plot and elements from the lore while focusing more on creating a dread-filled and suspenseful horror flick. FNAF 1 is often considered one of, if not the best game in the series because of the power of its simplicity and how good it is at creating a creepy atmosphere and tension. I was okay with the first night not being very eventful, just like the games, but there isn't a single scene outside of the prologue that shows the struggle and anxiety that comes with keeping things out of your office, which would have had insane potential for a horror movie. And speaking of the horror elements there aren't any. This is very much an entry-level horror flick, if you can even call it that. The film is filled with the game's iconic jump scares, but FNAF was never about the jump scares, it was about the anticipation and dread leading up to either receiving them or surviving the night. These jump scares are just weightless, because not only are a lot of them done to characters that we want to see the comeuppance of, the ones that happen to characters we care about are just random with no danger behind them. And the film's tone is wildly uneven, trying to balance a cheesy horror comedy that doesn't work, and at about the halfway point, all of the tension and scare aspects of the film are just gone and it stops being a horror film. To talk about that further though, we needed to discuss the actual story. If you're going into this movie expecting them to adapt an extensive part of the lore, you are going to be very disappointed. It only sticks to a basic outline of the story based on FNAF 1 while throwing in elements from other games to compensate, as well as its own original and terrible ideas. And even then, the story is incredibly different to FNAF 1, which isn't a bad thing on paper, but it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And there were several points that were just insanely funny to me. It has the premise and setting of FNAF FNAF 1, Springtrap, and the ending scene from FNAF 3, Vanessa from Security Breach, and even outright confirming she's Afton's daughter, which even Security Breach didn't do, and it leads to the film feeling incredibly unfocused, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me because we know this movie is going to get a follow-up, so it would have made far more sense to me if they just focused on telling and exploring the story of FNAF 1 instead of trying to throw in original ideas and elements from the other games, then have the sequels follow that same line of thinking. There's this whole thing with Mike trying to go into his dreams to recall more details about the day his brother Garrett was kidnapped by Afton, and it leads to him coming into contact with the ghosts of the five kids that possess the animatronics once he begins working at Freddy's. But for some reason, at the start of the film, the kids are also connected to his little sister, Abby, who draws pictures of them, and it's implied that she can see them too. And apparently the kids don't remember anything about Afton killing them because they're being controlled by drawings on the wall? And the movie literally ends with Abby drawing a new picture, which causes the animatronics to attack Afton. Like, I'm sorry if this is an abridged explanation, but there is so much about the ghosts and the dreams that just doesn't make any sense. And the whole thing with the drawings is unbearably <laughs> unbearably silly, even for the storytelling expectations of this franchise. And Garrett being kidnapped just doesn't really matter towards the end. Mike kinda moves on from it, but it just makes me wonder what the point of it was, or why Afton kidnapped and killed them in the first place. And to go back to the tonal issues, halfway through the film, Abby befriends the animatronics as the ghosts inside of them like her. And after they almost kill Mike, Abby tells them to stop, and then they just become friendly for the next 20 minutes. And then there's this weirdly comedic and lighthearted sleepover scene where they're trying to build a fort and there's a shot of them all lying down in a circle like it's a romantic comedy while a rock song plays in the background. And at this point I was just sat there wondering what I was even watching. I get that the idea was to always make the film adorable in some way, but this obliterates the tone and any sense of threat or scariness the animatronics even had, which is already incredibly minuscule. The scene isn't funny, it's just confusing. It wasn't just a massive mistake to do this only halfway through the film, it's a mistake to do this at all honestly. FNAF has always had a sense of humor 
humor, but this was just a movie ruining scene. It prevented me from taking them seriously later on when they went back to being evil again. Also, Afton isn't actually in the film at all. He has like three minutes of screen time despite being the main antagonist of the series. It's such a waste. Overall, while I certainly enjoyed my time with the film on a visual level, thought some scenes were pretty good and had a good laugh at some things that were not intended to be funny, I don't understand why people are trying to pass the film off as if it's actually good. People need to understand that you can like this movie and still acknowledge that it's really bad as a film, and it's not even that great as an adaptation, which leads us into the depths of hell. <laughs> <laughs> the discourse surrounding the FNAF movie has been a mess that a lot of people are comparing to the Mario movie, but I don't really see it that way exactly. The Mario movie was still an enjoyable kids film, if painfully average at the absolute worst, when you removed all of the stuff that Mario fans cared about. I can't really explain it too well, but I've seen far more hostile reactions towards the FNAF movie than I ever did from the Mario movie, and the majority of people in defense of the FNAF movie are diehard FNAF fans, whereas with Mario it was pretty much the vast majority of people, even outside the Mario fan base that defended the film. Still though, the main thing both of these movies share is that it's caused a lot of people to get angry at critic reviews again. As of writing this video, the FNAF movie currently has a whopping 26% on Rotten Tomatoes and a 29 on Metacritic. Critics are in almost unanimous agreement with their disliking of this film, compared to Mario where people were mostly mixed or completely divided. And just like the Mario movie, this has caused FNAF fans to lose their collective sh**. And all it's doing is reinforcing how much people lie about how only their thoughts in the film should matter, and also how much people don't understand how critic websites work at all. It demonstrates a lot of immaturity in how people online react to criticism as well as a lot of hypocrisy. Now I'm not going to pretend for even a second that there isn't just some outright awful criticism of the film. It should not be this hard for people to find issues with the Five Nights at Freddy's movie, but some people are really dedicated to making themselves come off as pretentious and to focus on issues that just do not exist. But people see the percentage for films on Rotten Tomatoes and Metacritic as a strong indicator of a film's quality for some reason. While I can say this isn't helped by the colours and icons used for negative negatively reviewed films, people need to realise that these numbers are just a percentage taken from how many critics positively review the film. It is not a film score. There is absolutely a conversation to be had about how the industry at large gives so much power to these critic reviews. Kevin Feige recently had a few embarrassing reports saying that he strives for every MCU film to have a certified fresh rating. But people need to understand that these critic websites are just places that gather all the reviews from critics and shows how many of them positively recommend the film. Whether you look at that and choose to either watch the film or walk away is completely up to you. But there is no reason for people to feel bad over the fact that they liked the movie that critics thought was terrible. And there's certainly no argument for treating RT ratings as an independent review score. That's just the end all be all of discussion surrounding a film. People treat these websites like they're independent entities with the same people reviewing every film to ever exist when that's definitely not true. People keep bringing up Netflix's Pido movie getting certified fresh ratings as a reason for why the website should not be trusted. And while yes the movie is disgusting, when it comes to FNAF I don't see how that comes off as anything other than a misguided dunk on people just because you disagreed with what they thought about the funny bear movie. There is little to no overlap with the people who reviewed Cuties and FNAF, and I don't think people realise that because they're too busy still thinking that RT is just an independent entity, and not a site that just compiles all the critic reviews into a percentage. And this still doesn't make much sense to me because if the FNAF movie opened with like an 80% or even a 90% critic percentage, I guarantee people would be celebrating like crazy. All of the attacks on critics or suggesting they were paid off is just people being insanely insecure about the fact that the movie they enjoyed was disliked by a majority of professional critics. I saw people genuinely upset that the FNAF movie reviews were negative, and then a day later I see these same people telling people not to trust critic reviews at all. Yet at the same time, I still see people being asses to critics for disliking the film, and I'm just so confused about it. Like, do you care about what people think about the film or not? You can't have it both ways where you encourage people to not trust critics and then to only trust their actual thoughts on the film, while at the same time attacking critics who didn't like it. That's their thoughts on the film. They're doing exactly what you're telling other people to do? What is this weird double standard? Are people just not allowed to call the movie bad because it is. In fact, a lot of the positive reviews I've seen from people just admit that the movie's story is terrible, but they liked it anyway, and recommend it to FNAF fans. I thought the movie sucked and still had a good time of it. A lot of people are also pointing out that the film was made for fans and not for critics. Do you know what the job of a critic is? Critics aren't supposed to be biased. You go into a movie, you say what you like, you critique what you don't like, it's a simple job. A FNAF movie is still a movie. If the movie part of the FNAF movie isn't good or someone doesn't like it, a critic will say so. Just because something is made for the fans doesn't automatically make a film good, nor are people obligated to like the film. If you acknowledge the movie is made for fans, then you also agree that non-fans are understandably going to criticize the film. And if you aren't interested in what non-fans have to say, then just f***ing ignore 
for them, you brain poisoned flesh hound. It is not that hard to make a good film that also appeals to the fan base. Video game adaptations have gotten tremendously better in recent years for knowing how to tell a good story that doesn't suffocate outside viewers with fan service while still keeping fans happy. Arcane is one of my favourite shows ever made and I hate League of Legends because everyone is better than me at it, but- and I'm not suggesting FNAF needs to be as good as that, but it's entirely possible to make something good and have it appeal to fans at the same time. Grow up, for f**k's sake. The FNAF movie causing this sort of discourse was expected, but some part of me believe that a fan base of people who willingly embrace the fact that their series is an awful story would at least be a bit more sympathetic to people who didn't enjoy the movie because of its awful and confusing narrative. If you're comfortable with admitting this, then why are you getting so mad that critics don't like the film? There is no grand conspiracy with critics being paid to give it bad reviews. That might be true for some other films, not this. Critics just don't like the film, it's as simple as that. I'm comfortable with saying I enjoyed the movie and that it was worth a watch, even if a good portion of that enjoyment was ironic. But I won't just ignore it as an adaptation, it's sorely lacking. And as a horror movie, it's not very scary at all. It was great to see these characters come to life on the big screen and the love put into every aspect of this movie outside the narrative and horror is very commendable. But the FNAF movie is far from perfect and I think people need to seriously let go of their egos for a second and realise that there is no shame in liking a movie that a lot of people think is bad. No shame at all. There is, however, plenty of shame if you act like this before you've even watched the movie yourself. That's the end of the video. The FNAF movie was fun, you should watch it with measured expectations, it's not a great movie, but I still enjoyed it. Play Yakuza. <laughs>